Good Day, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, the first speech of the President of Western Armenia, Armena Gabrahamian, at the 47th session of the Intergovernmental Commission on Intellectual Property and Genetic Resources, Traditional Knowledge and Folklore, recommendation to Paul Gavani, first vice chair of the OSCO Committee on Refugees, Displaced Persons and Migration, Philip Olanyes, open lecture on the importance of remembrance the nation building, Sons of Western Armenia, Agassi Hanjian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe holds a three-day meeting to monitor the implementation of ECHR judgment, the presentation of the Russian translation of the book Hamshen in Armenian manuscripts by Lucine Sahakian will take place in Sochi. Madam President, dear delegates of the member states, this year will be the fifth anniversary that the Assembly of Armenians of Western Armenia has had the honor of being accredited to take part in the sessions of the Intergovernmental Committee on Intellectual Property and Genetic Resources, Traditional Knowledge and Folklore, and in this first speech I would like to thank you and the whole Secretariat. A lot of work has gone into preparing today's diplomatic conference on genetic resources, which is why I would like to thank all the member states, as well as the indigenous peoples present in person and online, for all the efforts they have made to ensure that as many people as possible can take part in this diplomatic conference. As you know, for more than a century now, Western Armenia and its indigenous Armenian population, after being recognized as a sovereign and independent state in 1920, have been subjected not only to genocide but also to forced displacement, territorial division and annexation without respect for international law, illicit appropriation of its genetic resources, systematic destruction of its cultural and intangible heritage, forced conversions of its population and even denial of the very existence of the indigenous peoples concerned, victims of genocide with disastrous consequences for the transmission of traditional knowledge and cultural expressions. But despite all this, we continue to exist as an indigenous nation because we were born in the same territory through the same preserved transmission of our traditional knowledge and our cultural expressions and through our legal battle to assert our rights to defend the territorial integrity of our living space in the direction of our genetic resources. With this in mind, with regard to declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples and our right to self-determination, I wanted first of all to support and endorse the inclusion in the articles of the text presented of the relevant holders of rights and indigenous peoples. I would also like to point out that as a result of the illicit appropriation on genetic resources and traditional knowledge indigenous peoples or nations following the consequences of genocide, annexation, occupation and war may no longer be the holders of their stolen legitimate rights. It is therefore essential to work for the rehabilitation, application of the rights in question to the indigenous peoples directly concerned and thus for respect for the protections and living spaces and even for the territorial integrity that have been recognized de facto and de jure for indigenous peoples and nations by the states since the structures and legal systems were created. Thank you, Madam President. Armenak Abrahamian, President of the National Council of Western Armenia. When dealing with the Berzor Corridor and other issues, Europe should not forget that it concerns Armenians who survived the genocide, currently living under the threat of genocide, and who have lost their homes. The perpetrators of genocide acts have consistently sought to exterminate us, attempting to wipe us out completely in various periods, 1915-2023, resolving the situation in Berzor Lachin Corridor requires political approaches. Humanitarian solutions may worsen the problem and contribute to the deepening of the genocide. The solution for the Berzor Corridor must involve imposing sanctions against Baku. Otherwise, every statement made becomes an endorsement for Baku to further tighten the blockade. Entering Artsakh or the Berzor Corridor at Baku's whim means sacrificing Artsakh Armenians to Baku cannibals. UNESCO did this in 2006 when Baku banned UNESCO from visiting Nahijevan. 
In other words, Europe is asking the perpetrator of crimes against humanity for permission to prevent his crimes. Who can say where the logic lies? Europe cannot prevent genocide unless it really wants to prevent it. Territorial integrity cannot be subordinated to the human right to life. Europe must see the defense of Artsakh Armenians as the basis for the defense of the Berzor Corridor. The Berzor Corridor must be restored to its status before September 27, 2020. The situation caused by the aggression calls into question the international validity of the entire concept of the protection of human rights. European structures with their presence can help Artsakh refugees to visit their relatives in the Republic of Artsakh, support besieged Artsakh to solve the problems of electricity, water and fuel using the latest technologies, support peacekeeping forces from France, China, India and Iran in the Berzor Corridor and Artsakh. Europe must adopt the principle of separation through appeasement to liberate Artsakh and Artsakh Armenians from the grips of genocidal policies. The genocidal anti-Armenian policy has one goal, to destroy Armenians in their homeland, expel them from their homes and confiscate Armenian lands, resources, history and culture. Armenian cultural heritage is endangered in the Azerbaijani controlled territories of Artsakh. The Baku authorities are deliberately engaging in cultural vandalism, attempting to erase Armenian traces, destroying Armenian monuments and misrepresenting churches as UDI. Proposal 1. International structures represented by UNESCO should have access to the occupied territories to prevent cultural genocide. 2. By making the road of life impassable, the Baku authorities also prove that it is impossible for Artsakh Armenians to coexist with them. Peaceful, creative Armenians are today under constant targeting by the armed forces of the Baku government. Aliyev's aggressive behavior shows that Armenians cannot live in Artsakh under Azerbaijani administrative, legal and political control. Recommendation. The international community should try to take into account the fact that the people of Artsakh have already achieved self-determination and should not consider the human right to life in the context of territorial integrity. On the initiative of the Comité de Souvenir Français de Brun, a conference on the importance of remembrance in nation building was led by writer and essayist Philippe Olanier. The conference took place in Brun on Friday, June 2, 2023, and was attended by the mayor of Brun, Jeremy Brod, the president of the Comité de Souvenir Français de Brun, Yves Payson, local councillors, and various other personalities. Passionate about historical memory, the transmission of knowledge, and the history of genocide, Mr. Olanier also focuses on the study of women's rights and secularism, regularly publishing in eight national journals. In this lecture, the first of its kind in France, Mr. Olanier recounted the ongoing work of remembrance throughout France's contemporary history. He emphasized that the duty of remembrance has several dimensions, including being a unifying force, a gesture of respect towards the elderly, and indispensable for the transmission of values. Mr. Olanier encouraged the public, particularly the younger generation, to read and embrace the national narrative shared by Jules Michel. He understood the importance of memory, pedagogy in France, and the significance of transmission. He also said that if the shared narrative were to vanish, individuals would seek to create their own national narratives, leading to the rise of identitarianism. During the lecture, Mr. Olanier condemned current trends such as wokeism and cancel culture, which tend to erase or distort historical facts. He warned that mistreating history would result in the decline of a nation. The conference concluded with an enlightening quote from George Bernanos, Civilizations are mortal. Civilizations die like men, and yet they do not die like men. Their decomposition precedes their death instead of following ours. Following the conference, Mrs. Lydia Markosian, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Western Armenia, commended the high quality of the event. She emphasized that the duty of memory is intrinsically linked to every state structure, and any attack on this memory is an an attack on the foundations of a state. At the end of the conference, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mrs. Lydia Markosian, praised the high quality of the conference and stressed that every state structure was inextricably linked to the duty of memory and that any attack on this memory was an attack on the structure of a state. Mr. Sabuncu Freddy of the Centre National de la Mémoire Armenienne also took the floor to thank the lecturer and point out that, just like personal and family memory, the memory of the history was unique 
universal and should be passed on to younger generations, a memory that must not be forgotten, because repeating the mistakes of the past had not taught us a lesson. Mr. Sabunchu spoke of the plight of the Christians of the East, and in particular that of the Armenians in Artsakh, who needed to be supported in order to preserve centuries of civilization, culture and tradition. Not many people know about Hanjan today. He is mostly known for having a street named after him, which for some reason was left untouched in the turmoil of renaming. Probably the thing is that Agassi Hanjan was much loved in Armenia, but what guarantee was there that he wouldn't be loved more than Stalin? Hanjan's fate was predetermined. Western Armenia TV now turns its attention to one of the most controversial figures from Western Armenia, Agassi Hanjan. He was born in 91 in Van. After attending Yeremian's school, only in Van, Hanjan studied in his homeland and graduated from the diocesan school in Yerevan, followed by the seminary in Ejmiadzin. He later went to Moscow to continue his studies and eventually switched to party work in Leningrad. In 1928, Hanjan was elected as the second secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Armenia, and in 1930, he became the first secretary. According to Mahari's testimony, Hanjan worked 15 to 18 hours a day. The death of this great Armenian is a tragic story. Agassi Hanjan, the first secretary of the Communist Party of Armenia, fell victim to Stalin's regime. Many people, including a 16 year old boy from Yerevan, suffered alongside Hanjan. Unfortunately, not many people are aware of this. A full article on Hanjan's passing is available on our website. On one of the towers of the citadel of Dashtadem fortress near the city of Tallinn, an Arabic inscription can be seen. As mentioned in the text, it was left by one of the last Seljuk Amirs of the city of Ani, Shadat Sultan ibn Mahmud ibn Shavur. In September 1174, the inscription by the Amir informs about the construction of fortifications, specifically referring to some reconstructions and additional fortification works on the fortress. The main reason for these works was that in 1174, Armenian Georgian troops captured Ani and took Shadat Sultan, the Amir of Ani, as a captive. Sultan, the son of Shahanshah, sought refuge in Dashtadem and consolidated the fortress. In 1176, Ani was returned to Shadat Sultan and he moved back to Ani until the final liberation of the city by Armenian Georgian troops led by the Zakarian family. After the liberation of the Dashtadem fortress, extensive construction works were carried out by the Zakarian princes. The Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe is holding a three-day meeting to monitor the implementation of the rulings of the European Court of the Human Rights. As reported by Armen Press, this information was provided by the Press Service of the Council of Europe. The case is recommended for detailed study pertain to Armenia, Azerbaijan, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Croatia, France, Georgia, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Moldova, North Macedonia, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slovenia, Turkey, Ukraine and the United Kingdom. Them. The decisions adopted by the Committee of Ministers during the meeting will be published on the website of the Council of Europe on June 8. According to Article 46 of the European Convention on Human Rights, judgments of the European Court of Human Rights are legally binding. The Committee of Ministers oversees the execution of this judgment based on information provided by national authorities, applicants, NGOs, national human rights institutions, and other interested parties. The Government of Western Armenia would like to remind that applications from refugees from Shushi against the Baku authorities sent to ECHR by the President of the Government of Western Armenia, Armenak Abrahamian, are also pending. Additionally, 10 new applications will be received this month, and all applications will be included in the proceedings. On June 3, the presentation of the Russian translation of the book Hamshen in Armenian Manuscripts, published in 2019 by Lucine Sahakyan, an associate professor of the ECU Department of Turkic Studies and head of the Department of Armenian Ottoman Relations at the Institute of Armenian Studies of ECU, will take place in the city of Sochi. The author analyzes manuscripts rewritten by Hamshen scribes in the Hamshen province and other religious centers during the 30s to 70s centuries. The unique facts and evidence found their sources provide an opportunity to gain insights into the political, spiritual and cultural life of the province during the 30s to 70s centuries, as well as the occupation of the population, language, status and folk beliefs. Additionally, the Russian translation of the book includes the first publication of a map showing the settlements of Hamshen in the 15th to 17th centuries. This study was conducted within the framework of the themes of the Institute of Armenian Studies of ECU and the Committee of Science of the Republic 
music of Armenia. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs>